Hello Minions, Wheezy here, and today I'm going to talk to you about free-for-all in Call of Duty Cold War, specifically the tactics and strategies I use to do as good as you possibly can, because I think in Cold War not only is free-for-all one of the best ways to rank up quickly, both yourself and your weapons, it's also one of the most fun game modes, surprisingly, but I know not a lot of people play free-for-all, so I'm going to break down how to do as well as you possibly can so it's easy to get in there and get success as fast as possible. Let's go check it out. Okay, so one of the first things that we want to talk about that's critical in free-for-all is you want to hold down a defensible area of the map. Unlike other game modes that are more team-based and more objective-based, since free-for-all is essentially just a solo slayer mode, wandering around the map is not going to be a very good strategy because it will expose you to a lot more danger and angles you can't anticipate as opposed to other game modes. So. While I will say don't camp, you actually have to keep moving or you're going to get flanked or revenge killed. You do need to find an area that you can defend uh, while still being able to move around in it from multiple angles. And this will allow you to have your best chance of success because there is going to be a lot of action in free for all. Uh, depending on the map, but typically uh, you'll you'll start to learn where these engagement areas are and areas that are best for you to defend in each map, and you will be able to use those to control your engagements with the other players. Uh, you also want to make sure that you're using cover when you engage. This is a critical component of playing any shooter across the board, but especially in free-for-all when everything's essentially a one-on-one -on -one fight unless you're actually getting third partied, which is also relatively easy to happen in free-for-all. So you want to make sure that you're utilizing cover as much as possible. Uh, you want to control the engagements and make sure that your exposure to lines of sight for enemies is very limited. This goes along with cover. It's also kind of an application of concealment as well. But you want to make sure that you know the most likely directions the enemies are going to come from and that you have your gun trained in that direction so that you can react more quickly than the enemy. This is part of what this goes into having a defensible area. If you can't control which direction you're going to see enemies, you don't have a very defensible area. If if an enemy can come from any direction in front of you, your left, your right, behind you. That's a very difficult area to defend. So you want to find a place where you can control your engagements and limit the lines of sight that enemies are able to find you. And if you get on a decent streak, move. People in free-for-all will come looking for you. Now, because it'll spawn different people around you, it won't necessarily be the same person you kill four or five times in a row. But once you get on a decent streak, you will have killed enough people or the same person enough times that they will say, that guy has been in that corner for a while now. I'm going to go and find a good angle to take him out. So once you get on a good streak, move because people will come looking for you. But I would suggest that you find another nearby defensible position, if possible, especially one that has a line of sight to your old position, because you can then kill the people who will come back looking for you. This can be a very effective strategy. You, you hold down an area, kill a bunch of people. When you start to feel that pressure that they're coming back for revenge, find another area nearby so that when they come rushing to your old position, you can kill them again. And then this starts this nice yo-yo of they will come to your new position and you can either move to a third position or go back to your original position. It makes it really hard for them to predict where you're going to be. So as far as creating and defending an area of the map, these are the strategies that I use. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is audio cues in free-for-all. And this is actually an important part of every modern Call of Duty game, but especially free-for-all. So... If at all possible, you need to get yourself a decent pair of headphones if you don't already have one. Um, you can find decent ones that'll help you do this for not too much money these days. Um, but it really, in Call of Duty just over the past, well, many years, but uh, in Free For All, it's really helpful to be able to hear enemies approaching and their footsteps. Even, uh, and especially in, in Free For All where people can definitely get the drop on you if you're not careful. So um, use headphones if at all possible. If not, you know, try and get to somewhere where you can have your volume up loud enough that you can hear footsteps coming and hopefully in a way that 
it's directional if you have some kind of surround sound. Um, the game does a decent job at that. Sometimes with the audio occlusion it can be a little irritating. You can't necessarily tell exactly which direction the footsteps are coming from. Um, but I won't dig into that too much here today. Uh, in addition to that, once you start getting used to listening to other people approach and the advantage it gives you in being able to ambush them, the other thing you really need to take care of is to be aware of your audio footprint, which means literally be aware of your footsteps. So in free for all, you should sprint only when absolutely necessary, like when you're worrying about being killed and you can escape to cover or when you're out in the open and you're trying to move to a new position. Um, Sprinting not only slowers your ability to react and fire at the enemy, but it also makes you really loud so that people can hear you and you will find yourself getting ambushed if you're sprinting around. Um, when you hear someone nearby, move slowly to reduce your noise. Um, walking is quiet, walking slowly is quieter, walking while ADS is even quieter, and then crouch walking is completely silent. Now you will obviously be moving slower, so depending on the situation that may not be what you need to do if someone's approaching you quickly. And, uh, and you need to be able to react quickly, then going slow isn't necessarily gonna help you. But if an enemy doesn't necessarily know where you are and you need to reposition, be aware of silent ways that you can move. Um, you can use ninja, obviously, if you wanna move around the map more without being ambushed. Uh, ninja is a relatively higher level unlock, um, up in the 30s, what, like 38 or something like that. And once you unlock it, especially for free for all, I would recommend that that ninja become one of your go-to perks, uh, and we'll talk about recommended loadouts later. Um, but uh, ninja not only helps you not be heard by other people, but it also helps you hear better by not having to listen to your own clompy footsteps. So it makes your ability to listen much more powerful in addition to the fact that it hides your movements as well. Um, it doesn't completely silence your footsteps, especially if you're like sprinting around, but people will really need a decent pair of headphones and really be paying attention to to hear you if you have ninja and you're moving around. Uh, I, I do listen for footsteps pretty intently and I get snuck up on by ninja uh, pretty regularly. So it's a very powerful perk to use, especially in free for all. Um, but in general, make sure that you are listening for enemy footsteps as well as being aware of how much noise you're making. So now let's talk about what you should do every time you spawn. This is going to be a more uh, direct, actionable item that you can take in Free For All, and you should do this every time you spawn to give yourself the best success in every life and therefore in every match. First, as soon as you spawn, you need to identify where you are on the map. As you play Free For All on the relatively limited num number of maps there are right now, um, and as you just get used to it, First identify where you are and then locate the nearest defensible position. So even if you're new to a map, you can usually look around and see if there's an area that has cover that isn't going to be able to be flanked from every direction. Once you've identified where you are and where your nearest defensible position is, use cover and move towards that position while engaging people that are in the open. So what I mean is don't just sprint to the place where you want to be because that will end up getting a making you loud b probably putting you out in the open and c making it very vulnerable for you to get killed so you want to you want to see where you are know where you're going but to get where you're going you still want to be playing the game and trying to engage people as you move tactically so if you just try to run to a power position someone may already be occupying that position someone will hear you sprinting across the map um, you want to use cover and move towards that position while watching where you expect enemies to be. And then once you get to that defensible position, use it like we talked about earlier. Use it to engage people from limited angles. When you get on a streak, keep moving around. Don't just sit in a corner and, and make sure that you're using smart engagements, checking your angles, using cover like we talked about before. So if you follow these steps every single time you spawn, then you will put yourself in the best position for success in the entire match. If you just spawn and if there's only one spot on the map that you want to get to, then that's also a, a kind of going to put you in a limited situation. There are various defensible positions around any given map. You will learn where they are pretty quickly, um, primarily because if you don't use them, you will be killed by people who are in them pretty regularly. So. <clears throat> make sure that you you know you start to learn and pay attention to where the defensible positions are find the nearest one and fight your way to it 
tactically and you will find yourself having a lot more success in free-for-all. So now let's talk about some things you do not want to do in free-for-all. So here's my list of do not do these things. Do not sprint across the map. Do not move out in the open. Do not make a lot of unnecessary noise. Do not camp in a single spot for more than one or two kills. And do not stay in a defensible position for more than four or five kills. So let's kind of address these a little bit more specifically. Um, we've, we've touched on all of these in the tactics leading up till now, but if you kind of use these rules as, as kind of the big red flags of things you should not do, then you will find yourself not being in as many bad positions and not getting as many unnecessary deaths. So not sprinting across the map, right? You're limiting your noise, you're not putting yourself out in the open, you're not exposing yourself to a lot of enemy angles. Not moving out in the open, same same thing, you know, sprinting across, whether you're, whether you're walking across the map or sprinting across the map, if you're moving in the open, you're in danger. Um, making noise and then and camping in spots. So I know that I'm talking, this may be a little confusing. I'm talking about finding and using defensible positions, but not camping because what some people will do is they'll find a little corner that has really limited lines of sight. Um, and so whoever's going to show up, like if it's a doorway, they'll know exactly where you're going to come from and they'll just shoot you and they will find that spot and they will sit there until they get killed, right? They may get one, two, three kills before someone comes back and says, this guy's just sitting in this one place and I can throw a grenade there without him even having a chance to shoot me. I know I do this to campers all the time, right? Don't be that person. It's not going to be a sustainable tactic for you. It may get you one, two or three kills, but if we're looking at bigger success, more consistent gameplay. You don't want to sit in a single position, period. You want to keep moving. And inside the context of a defensible area, you don't want to sit there for too long. If you kill four, five, six people, people will be coming back for you. They will be throwing grenades at you. They will be doing everything that they can to dig you out. It's just the nature of the game. So don't sit in a single spot for more than one or two kills and don't say stay in a single area for more than four or five keep moving be unpredictable and be smart okay so let's jump in here and look at some loadout suggestions now i have my two go-to free-for-all kits set up here uh, but i'll give you some some general tips on on how i build these now um these Free-for-all kits are built around what the two wild cards that I recommend for this, which is Lawbreaker or Perk Greed. Um, and we'll open this up just to take a look at, at why I recommend those. So Danger Close gives you extra lethal and tactical equipment. That's not going to be as useful in, in free-for-all as you think. Um, Lawbreaker allows you to equip multiple perks from a single perk category. This is important um, for if we want to use multiple perks from Perk 3. That's what I think is going to be valuable for free-for-all, and I'll explain. Gunfighter is extra attachments. I don't think this is very necessary for most weapons. Most weapons are fine with five. They don't need eight. It's my, my <laughs> notification goes off on my laptop. Um, and then Perk Greed uh, is also pos yeah, a good one because if you don't want to use three perks from a single category, uh, it can be a good thing. So let me just walk you through uh, the Lawbreaker version. So Lawbreaker allows you to equip any perk, uh, any number of perks from anyone. So instead of one perk one, one perk two, and one perk three, you can take three perk threes, or you can take, you know, any combination therein. So I have settled on Engineer, Ninja, and Cold-Blooded as my go-to. Um, I'll address that as, and also say that this allows you to take a second primary weapon. Um, so this is like overkill in previous games in addition to that. Unless you're someone who really likes to bust out a sniper, I don't find myself using the secondary weapon at all. I put something, you know, like if I've got this burst file, fire AUG on and I've got a close range SMG on, I still find myself not using the secondary much at all. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, if you're working on like doing unlocks for say a shotgun or something like that, this could be more valuable for say putting your shotgun in primary, that's what you're trying to work with. But then at longer range using a burst fire or sniper or whatever works for you. Um, but in general, this isn't necessarily something that I am too focused on, is using the two weapons. It's more important to be able to choose the perks that you want. Um, so I, Ghost was my starting out go-to. Um, you will find that 
that there's not that UAVs aren't as ubiquitous in free for all because instead of a team kind of situation, um, if if someone gets a UAV, only that one person sees it, and so if they're not literally next to you on the map, then it doesn't necessarily do them much good. And I don't think you'll find that a whole lot of people run UAV necessarily as much in free for all. So I don't recommend Ghost. I find that it's kind of not used very much. I use Cold Blooded because people will occasionally. Um, get streaks such as, uh, well, RCXDs aren't super common in free for all. Um, attack choppers do happen now and then. Uh, sentry guns, so cold blooded is good to help you not get picked up by those things. It's also not as critical. Um, I just recently unlocked Spycraft, so that's something I will probably play with more. I might be willing to trade out cold blooded for Spycraft, but cold blooded in general, if it helps you not get killed, which cold blood helps you not get killed by kill streaks, then that's a good attachment. Uh, ninja, we've talked enough about silent footsteps and how important that is. Um, so ninja is is a good perk to have. Perk two, uh, assassin can be good for getting extra points, but other than that, there's really not much here that I recommend. The field upgrade cooldown, you know, getting extra. I don't know. I still feel like even though I'll recommend using the proximity mines, I don't necessarily like the idea of getting more of them faster. Um, I just dump them when I get them. And I choose Engineer here because I find that I, there's not a whole lot of grenades going around in free-for-all. And Engineer allows you to see people's field equipment. People will use... It, it helps so you don't run into proxy mines. It also helps when people camp an area and they set up a field mic. It helps you see where they are. So Engineer, I find, is a very good perk to use for helping locate. It's almost like a like a very subtle sort of UAV that helps you kind of identify where people are. So there's various choices for what you can do here. This is what I've settled on that I really like. I use Stimshot. I, I typically am the kind of person who likes stun grenades um, because it allows me to stun check areas, but that makes a lot more sense in team games when you kind of are trying to find out where the enemy team is coming from. In free for all, I have found that Stimshot it's taken me practice to remember that I have it and to use it, but I find that's more valuable. You get in a one-on-one -on -one fight, typically, and then that fight attracts someone else. It's good to be able to hit a stim shot and then engage the next fight with full health. Simtex, uh, I have found, is so far for me the most useful uh, lethal equipment. In previous Call of Duty games, I tend to prefer frags because you can cook them, and that gives you a lot more ability to decide when they detonate but I have found that the frags aren't very strong in this game. I, I find them very inconsistent for actually killing people. Simtex has been a lot more successful for me. And then the proximity mine. Because in free for all, these pop up, you leave them behind, they don't despawn when you die, so they can be free kills, which, you know, when you need to get 30 kills in a game, every little bit helps. I find the field mic isn't very useful. You're gonna be listening to audio and your engagements are gonna happen so quickly that you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of time for this to help you a ton. Um, trophy systems, again, not many grenades. Uh, assault packs, probably not gonna need refills on ammo. Uh, SAM turrets, you know, you're not gonna run into a lot of score streaks. You know, I mean, just in general, gas mine, I haven't played with much, but that might actually be somewhat useful, but for a two minute recharge time for that, I mean, I don't know, it's not gonna get you a kill. So uh, not the same way the proximity mine is. So that's what I would recommend for that. So, and I'm not necessarily recommending specific weapons in here because part of the idea of playing free-for-all is to be able to rank things up, like if you want to find quicker ways to rank weapons up. So I won't necessarily recommend a specific weapon. You guys will figure out naturally which ones are the strongest weapons in the game because you'll get killed by them a lot. So just be aware of that. My other class is the Perk Greed build. And um, this one, you get two from each class so you you know have to choose some again ninja and cold-blooded is where i've settled like i said i will play with spycraft a little bit more um but i won't trigger proximity mines that could be valuable but if you if you run an engineer almost redundant so i you might if you want to play something and, and not take engineer this might be a good replacement for that uh you get some perk twos assassin gets gets you some extra points just randomly you'll be killing people anyway so it doesn't hurt to just get some bonus points sometimes this will give you an extra proxy mine you're not going to really need scavenger you're probably not going to be going on that kind of streak where you're just going to run out of ammo um quartermaster recharging equipment this could be valuable if you use a lot of equipment uh tracker probably not going to be moving around as much so this is where i've kind of 
fallen with that. These are just kind of like bonus throwaway perks. Again, I'm sticking with Engineer. I went with Flak Jacket just because something that will help keep you alive. I tried using Forward Intel a little bit. It really doesn't do much, even in team games. I find that in general, in Call of Duty, if you pay attention, you will know generally the direction the enemy team is spawning. You don't need a perk to put a dot or a, a, a line of light on the edge of your radar to show you which direction people are spawning. Um, it can be helpful now and then, but I, I used it for a while and I found it I found it to be essentially a waste of a perk. So Tack Mask or Flak Jacket is what I would recommend. I went with Flak Jacket because it keeps you alive. Tack Mask will also help keep you alive, but tactical grenades won't kill you. <laughs> Fla you know. Semtex will. So for Perk Greed, that is my, my recommendation. This is, of course, I, I would probably recommend this over Lawbreaker because you get more perks. And like I said, I don't often find myself using my secondary weapon much anyway. So, so the extra, you know, the limitation of, of that, unless you want to use three perks from the same category, in which case Lawbreaker will help you out. So if you say wanted to do you know, spycraft. That might be an option if you don't want to use engineer. Um, but short of that, I would find that having two perks from each category is is going to be the sweet spot for that. So um, briefly, let's go ahead and address score streaks as well, because this can be an important part of how you play free for all as well. Um, this is currently my free for all setup. So the sentry turret, the napalm. And the attack helicopter is what I would recommend. You can, if you have a decent game, you will most likely get an attack helicopter, and it can be a, a really good help because, especially in free for all versus team modes, people are a lot more hesitant to switch to an anti air kit when something shows up because they feel like it's less of a threat to them, um, or just kind of in my experience. So uh, I like that, and because, especially in games like free for all, that's why I also like the sentry turret as well. Kill streaks that don't require your active participation essentially are a for force multiplier. And what I mean is, the RCXD, when you're driving it around, which is, you, you could get two or three of these in a game, so this can be useful too. Um, but while you're using it and driving around the map to get a kill, your person, your character, is laying somewhere driving this car, which opens you up to get killed, and it means that you're not out killing, right? So if you have something like, if an RCXD car drove itself around, while you were also walking around shooting people, then that would that would be a force multiplier. You're essentially two players now. That is what the sentry turret does. You set the sentry turret up in a in a advantageous position, and it will get kills for you without your input. While you can also be getting kills, so it mul multiplies you as a force. Um, Napalm Strike doesn't do that, and you do have to call it in. But Napalm calls in really quickly, and it covers a large area. And I find that it is a good way to get. A, you know, get a kill or two here. Um, it can be pretty consistent. And if you get, um, you know, if you, and it also gives you when you pull it up to call it in, it gives you a free kind of UAV sweep. So it can also give you an idea where people are on the map. So um, I find Napalm is a valuable one and it's relatively easy to unlock. Um, artillery, I used to be a big fan of. I find that it's not quite as consistent as Napalm and it takes more to unlock. And the cruise missile, I think, just takes too long. Um, another reminder, much like the RCXD. I think it just takes too long for you to drive it in versus, you know, it might guarantee you one kill or two, um, but the napalm, you could call it in much faster and it'll get you more kills. Sentry gun, especially in free for all, I find the sentry gun sometimes gets me three, four, five kills. Um, War Machine, I think could be a good option. Uh, it's kind of a force multiplier in that it makes you more lethal, but at the same time, it doesn't operate on its own. And it's so close, an extra 500 points for the attack chopper, and it will fly around on its own and get kills for you. So um, these higher ones, I think, are a little bit overkill. I don't think you're going to be able to consistently get them in a free-for-all. And if you do, if you unlock a chopper gunner or a harrier in a free-for-all, you're probably already on like a 15 kill streak, 20 kill streak anyway. So you, they're not really going to help you versus this one where you could you could be in a game where the, where it's close and this could be the deciding factor. If you get these, you've already pretty much won the game. So there's these are just rubbing it in. Um, so that would be my suggestion for score streaks. And so yeah, that covers loadouts and score streaks for free-for-all. So uh you know, if you guys have have things that you found are more effective, I would love to hear. I'm by no means a uh, you know an expert on free for all, but I have uh, spent quite a bit of time in there lately. And uh, I'll jump into barracks real quick. It has it has been going pretty well for me, I will say. Um, 
as far as let's see, we got wins and losses here. Uh, it's been going pretty well, <laughs> playing free for all, and score per minute still is up in the 500s. So, um, and over my last, yeah, my my overall score per minute 552. My last 10 games score per minute 718. It's just. It's just there's still no comparison. Uh, team deathmatch it keeps surprising me with how good it is, but uh, as for, for score per minute, but yeah, I just when it comes to free for all, I follow these tactics, you know, follow the strategies that I've given you, and and this is <laughs> this is what you're gonna see. <laughs> well, minions, I hope that helped you out. I hope you can use these tactics to help you have more success in free-for-all. Let me know if you use them. Let me know if you have tips for free-for-all that you can share with me. I'm not the expert at this, but uh, you know, I'd love to have some dialogue with you guys. Um, if you're not minions, meaning if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. There's a lot more stuff coming that I'm, that I'm going to be doing. I've been doing gameplays and story time and all this stuff, so, um, so stick around. If you guys got some value out of that video, you guys can like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it so that I know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. See you later.